Well, good morning and welcome to Christ Life Center. Glad you're with me today. I'd like to start off today about a little joke that I can share with you that hopefully set the mood for our presentation. I was talking to a Catholic priest the other day and he told me, he says, um, his name was Father O'Brien. And um, he got a phone call. And as he answered the phone call, he says, hello, this is Father O'Brien. And uh, the response was, it is. And he says, this is the IRS. Can you help us? And of course, Father O'Brien said, sure, I can. How can I help you? Do you know Ted Houlihan? He says, well, yes, I do. Is he a member of your congregation? He says, oh, of course, yes, he is. He's been with us many, many years. Did he donate $10,000 to the church last year? And Father O'Brien answered very quickly, says, he will. <laughs> I hope that blessed you today as we get into today's teaching. <coughs> Spiritual gifts, okay? Spiritual gifts, we want to talk to you today and get you to the point where you understand what spiritual gifts are all about. Not only how they, you can access them, but how you can walk in their concepts. <coughs> I want to talk about the gift of faith today. The Bible says to another, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 9, to another, the gift of faith by the same Spirit. So, the gift of faith becomes the power vehicle by which God works miracles. Now, the Bible, the power gifts that we have is the gifts of healing, gift of faith, and the working of miracles. However, the gift of faith operates both with the working of miracles and the gifts of healing. It is that point in which is a leaping off point of faith. We all have our own level of faith, and the Bible says it's given to every man a measure of faith. So that faith that we have, that faith that God's entrusted us with, that every one of you have the same faith that raised Jesus from the dead. But the gift of faith is a supernatural impartation where you move beyond <coughs> the impossible and the possible becomes, the impossible becomes possible with God. <coughs> Excuse me. So the gifts of healing, that is a, spiritual manifestation of God's miracle healing power. The Jehovah Rapha, the God that healeth thee. The, this is the empowering of the Holy Spirit to supernaturally heal not just the physical man, but the mind and the spirit. These two gifts, gift of faith and the gifts of healing, operate in conjunction. The same with the working of miracles. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 10, it says, To another, the working of miracles. <clears throat> now, the Bible has the gift of faith, and then it has the working of miracles, plural, and the gifts, plural, of healing. So there are many miracles that God operates, and there are many ways that God heals. But they all are important and they use the gift of faith to launch the individual into that dynamic. God is a God of miracles. And so let me just share with you today. So as we're getting into today's teaching, uh, miracles are a very important part of the kingdom of God. You see, when God is no longer operating in miracles in the church, then the great I am becomes the great I was. And so it is incumbent upon us to begin to access and to release those spiritual gifts to manifest the miraculous, to manifest healings, to manifest word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, the discerning of spirits, uh, prophecy, tongues and interpretation. All of these gifts God wants to release in the body of Christ today. <coughs> now you're listening to me today, and you'll have to excuse me because once again I deal with this little ongoing COVID cough. But I'm getting better every single week. Now, let's talk and give you a couple examples of a working of miracles. Talk about a word of knowledge, word of wisdom, working of miracles, uh, uh, all of the things that, that we're talking about in the gifts of spirit. Several years ago in our church I, on Saturday night when I was preparing for a teaching, God gave me a vision. Okay, now the vision is a word of knowledge that he gave me. 
And in that vision, I saw the church, and I saw in the back of the church a woman come in, in a wheelchair, in a polka dotted dress. And then I saw in that vision, God give me a word of knowledge, <coughs> that I was to pray for her. And uh, at that time, we had three morning worship services. And the first service, I announced, I announced the dream. I announced the vision. I clearly proclaimed it. I knew that this was what God was going to do. But in the first service, she was not there. The second service, I announced the same thing. But she was not there. In the third service, as I praise and worship ended and I began my teaching, and I shared at the beginning of the teaching uh, that this was the vision that God had spoken to me. That I had clearly seen this word in a vision, a word of knowledge in a vision. And uh, lo and behold, all of a sudden, this woman is in the back, and she's in a wheelchair, and she's in a polka dotted dress. <coughs> so as I watched her and uh, I began to preach, I knew that this was God, and I knew that God was going to do something very miraculous. Now, the reason I knew it was not because I had any kind of supernatural uh, confidence that was going to happen. I just knew that the confidence came by God giving me the impartation of the word of knowledge. And I knew that the word of knowledge was going to bridge over into the gift of faith and the gifts of healing and miracles. So I called her forward, and her name was Cora. And uh, she had multiple sclerosis. She was in a wheelchair, and she'd been in a wheelchair for several years. And her legs had not been used for many, many years. And as a result, the muscles was, were, were in atrophy. She had all lost almost all the muscle in her legs. And if you looked at her leg, um, in fact, I just put my arm up here. My arm right here in this area was is larger than what her entire leg was. She was literally, from the waist down, bones and skin. Skin and bones. So as she came forward in the auditorium, and God directed me to go ahead and pray for her. And in the natural, you need to understand, in the natural, I did not have any confidence that this would happen. But, in the spiritual, I'd known that I'd heard from God, I'd had the vision, and I knew that at that point I had to go into the gift of faith, and God imparts that, and I go into a level to where that which is impossible becomes possible. I lay hands on Korah, and as I laid hands on her, I knew that there was a release of the Spirit in the presence of God. Korah said, I'm healed. She literally stood up from the wheelchair literally stood up and began to walk. Now, she began to walk very quickly and briskly, and I had to slow her down. I said, slow down, wait. You've, you've not walked in many years. Your muscles are not ready to do that kind of, uh, that amount of walking. And so, so just take it your time. And she walked around the auditorium a few times, praising and worshiping God. Now, Cora, uh, God bless her. She passed away a few years later, but she did not pass away from multiple sclerosis. She had another condition that caused her to pass. So you saw that you had the word of knowledge. The word of wisdom was what we were to do. Operating with the gift of faith. Initiating the gifts of healing and the working of miracles. This is how it begins to operate. Now, how do you and I begin to access that kind of level of faith? And how do we access the gifts of healing and the working of miracles? It comes by each individual believer, first of all, realizing that you have the gifts available to you, that you have access to those gifts, and that through those gifts that's already residing in you, already present in you, you don't, it's not something that you have to go out and search for. What has to happen is you have to access that which is present in your spirit. Now, if you don't even know that they're there, you won't access. You won't use what you don't know that you have. And you can't access that what you don't believe that you have. So my teachings today is to encourage you, to get you to the point that you can access 
and release that gift and those nine gifts of the Spirit to make a difference in this planet. Now, the contemporary church today has almost completely ignored the gifts of the Spirit, and they have substituted that lights, smoke, big screens, skinny jeans, and um, a nightclub setting. But for those of you who want to have that setting, I presented that to you today. And so you begin to access, you begin to realize that there is something within you that is so dynamic that the moment you realize it, it will transform and change everything you believe. I've been in many circumstances and many situations throughout the world. Now, many times, these miracles and healings that I, I'm able to witness to you about occurred in foreign countries, many times in a third world country where they didn't have insurance. They didn't have uh, Obamacare. They didn't have Blue Cross Blue Shield. They didn't have Jackson Memorial Hospital. And the tendency for Western Christians is the Bible says that if there's any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. Our first response is not to call for the elders of the church. It's to call the doctor. It's to go to the emergent care center. Now, there's nothing wrong with going to the doctor. Nothing wrong with going to the urgent care center. But you should begin to be cognizant that God wants you, first of all, to come to him. Come to him first and trust him for your healing and for your deliverance. <coughs> so, as you go through these um, beginning seeing miracles take place in your life. Give you another witness and another testimony. I think it'll be a blessing to you. And the reason I'm giving you these presentations of miracles that's happened in my life is to inspire you to be able to operate in the same thing. I remember a few years ago, I took a group of our church um, to Haiti, uh, to the new missions in Haiti, in Leogon, Haiti. And in that area, there's a lot of leprosy. In fact, there's a leper hospital. And I always take the group when I go down there. I said, get a, I have them buy a bunch of soap and, uh, you know, bring some things that they can take to the hospital and give to the patients. Uh, literally, the leper hospital in Leogon, Haiti, you wouldn't want to put your dogs there. It is absolutely deplorable but it's all that they have. And I encourage people, we go through there, we pray for people, we lay hands on them, then we, we trust God for their healing. Well, after we'd gone to the leper colony, I was at the New Missions, and they have an outdoor pavilion, and I was just sitting there, and all of a sudden, a young girl came and began to walk up to the pavilion. And she was probably 12, 13 years old, not older than that, and she had a she had a big hat on, big floppy hat, sort of hiding her face. And she had a dress all the way up to her neck and all the way down to her wrist and literally went down almost to the ground. And she came and she says to uh, the interpreter, I want Grand Blanc to pray for me. Now, who is the Grand Blanc? That's me, the big white. <laughs> and uh, so she said, I want the Grand Blanc to pray for me. Now, when I went and approached her, I could see from her hands, and as I got closer to her and I see from her face, I could see she had leprosy. I could see clearly there was, she was sick. And um, I said to her, I said, do you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? She said, yes. I said, well, then let's pray. Let's pray that God takes this leprosy away from you in the name of Jesus. Now, let me explain something to you. In the natural, as I looked in the natural, in the physical, my natural mind absolutely had zero faith that she would be healed. I mean, zero faith. I, I mean, in one level, you didn't even want to lay hands on her. But at the same time, I knew that if I laid hands on her, she had come to me and I was her point of contact, her point of release of her faith. So as I laid hands on her, I prayed for her in the name of Jesus, the God to heal her. <clears throat> now, at that moment, 
There was no instant manifestation or the working of miracles. The Bible says they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall what? Recover. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So after I prayed for her, she says, uh, would the Grand Blanc baptize me? And I said, certainly. So we went out into the ocean there on the seashore in, 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 in where the mission is. And uh, it's a beautiful area, waded out into the water. <coughs> and I baptized her, total immersion, giving praise to glory in the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, she went on her way, and I didn't see her from that time forward all the time that I was there. Several months later, George Detalis came to our church, and he had a slide presentation. And in that slide presentation, uh, he started showing the children of the mission and the school and so forth. And then he showed a young lady, a young girl, 13, 12, 13 years old, and he says, Pastor, do you remember her? Now I looked at her and I said, no, not really. I, and then he says, do you remember the girl in the big floppy hat and the long dress that had leprosy that you prayed for and later baptized? I said, oh yeah, I remember her. Well, this is her new picture. After you had prayed for her, God began a process of healing. She was completely healed and restored. And she had no signs or even scars of leprosy on her body. Well, glory to God. I'm telling you, if that doesn't light you up, your, your wood's wet, okay? <coughs> so, things happen. Things happen around the world. Things happen around the world in third world situations because they have to trust God. They have to believe in a miracle. We have become a society and churches that rather than us trusting God for healing. Now, I go to doctors. I go to, you know, I have no problem going to hospitals. But also at the same time, I believe in healing. I believe in miracles. I believe God is a God of healing and a God of miracles. So with that in mind, I want to encourage you. <coughs> People you come across. Let me take a little drink of water. People who you come across people who you are in relationship with, people who ask you to go to the hospital, people who you know that are sick, when you see that they're sick, just simply go inside. Go inside the presence of God. It takes just a second. And just ask God, God, I'm going to pray for them. I'm going to ask them permission to pray for them. And I pray that the gifts of the Spirit will become functioning and operating in my life. Now, one of the things that I've taught over the years is that most of you maybe don't understand it, but you have a, the Bible said, lay hands on the sick. Most of us have a hand that sends out energy or the healing anointing. Mine is my right. And the left in my situation is a receiving hand. And when we get to our practicum later on, I will show you how that you can know which is your sending hand and receiving hand. It is the sending hand that you lay hand and you begin to release that healing power. You feel it literally come up from your innermost being, go through your body, go out your hand, and you'll feel that release of that power and that energy of the Spirit of God in a very powerful way. We'll get into that later on in the future teachings. But I wanted to come to you today. I wanted to tell you that Jesus Christ is Lord. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, simply pray this prayer today. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I ask you to cleanse me of all unrighteousness. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I believe you died on the cross, rose from the dead, and you're now my Lord and Savior. If you prayed that prayer today, I want to encourage you. Come by the church, schedule baptism, or find a Baptist, uh, a church that will baptize you, not a Baptist church per se, but a church that will baptize you and begin your journey with Jesus Christ. Let me remind you that we have services every Sunday morning at 1047 a.m. at 9775 Southwest 87th Avenue in Miami, Florida. And I want to thank you for being with me today. God bless you, and we will see you soon.